Daf Yomi, Tractate Bava Basra, page 78a. Daf Ayan Ches, Amit Aleph, top of the page, Vichy Tema. Vichy Tema, Bitl Mekas, Allah Rabbon, and Leslie, who be low, but the Nana Yu Doimel. Amor Ches, if it's higher, Behem, and Margolis. Ain't no hen, I know. This is back to uh, this reminder of Pesach time. We had this. Bava Mazia. Wow. Yeah, in the Sugi of Ona over there, I would see, I would see in the fifties, fifty six B. Um, Amruloi, Loi Mo Ela Es Elu, and if you would say that the rabbis do not hold that in the case of exploitation of less than one sixth, one must return the money, and that if it was more than one sixth, there is nullification of the transaction. Can it be maintained? That they do not accept these halachot, but didn't we learn in a Mishnah in Bab Mitzvah fifty six b that Rabbi Yehuda says even in the case of one who sells a Torah scroll, an animal, or a pearl, these items are not subject to the halachot of exploitation, as they have no fixed price. The rabbi said to him, the early sages stated that only these items listed earlier in the Mishnah like land, slaves, documents, are not subjects to the halakhos of exploitation. Therefore, the rabbis should agree that the sale of the yoke is nullified. The Gemara answers, what is the meaning of the Mishnah that teaches that? According to the opinion of the rabbis, the sum of money, the sum of money, you want money, the sum of money is not proof. This means that the transaction is nullified. And if you wish, say instead, that the sale of the yoke is not nullified because when the sages spoke of exploitation and the nullification of a transaction, they meant that these halakhot apply only in a case where the difference in price is an amount about one which one could be mistaken and believe that this is the correct price. But when the difference in price is so great a sum that one could not be mistaken, the sale is not subject to the halakhot of exploitation. In that case, one must say that the buyer gave the extra money to the seller as a gift he could not have thought that this was the actual price of the object. And that is the end of that. New Mishnah. So one who sells a donkey. Lo mochar kelov. He has not sold its vessels. omer mochar kelov. He did. He has sold its vessels. Mochar kelov. Rabbi Yehuda says there are times when the vessels are sold and there are times when they're not sold. How so? If the donkey was performing his vessels were on it, and the buyer said to him, Sell me this donkey of yours, its vessels are sold. If the buyer said to him, Is a donkey yours? I wish to purchase it, its vessels are not sold. Gemara. Amar Ula Machloikis Vesak Vidisakio Vichumini Ditana Kama Savar Stam Chamor Lukovkai. Uh, Ula says the dispute in the mission is referring to the donkey sack and the saddlebag and the, the kumni. A term explained later in the Gemara. Okay. As the first tunnel holds an ordinary donkey is used primarily for riding. 
And therefore, these articles, which are not used for writing, but carrying burdens, are not included in the sale. Nachum the Mead sale holds an ordinary, an ordinary donkey is used for carrying burdens, and therefore the items that serve this purpose are sold along with the donkey. But with regard to the saddle and the saddle cloth, the harness and the saddle bed, everyone agrees that they are sold, as they are used both for riding and carrying burdens. Mace the Gemara raises an objection from Raisa. Let's, if the seller says, I'm selling you a donkey and its vessels, um, this one has sold the saddle. Um, if someone says just a very general statement, I'm selling you the donkey and its vessels, then it's understood that they sold the saddle, the saddle cloth, the harness, and the saddle band. I guess these are very standard parts of the, you know, a rideable donkey. You're not just selling the donkey. You can't ride it. You need you need the harness and the saddle and all those things to ride the donkey. But he has not sold the sack, the saddle bag, and the kumni, which we'll explain later. Um, when and when the seller says to the buyer, I am selling it and everything that is on it to you, the donkey and all these items are sold. It can be inferred from here that, that the reason that the buyer acquires the saddle and the saddle cloth is that the seller said to him, I am selling you a donkey and its vessels. By inference, if the seller did not say this, the buyer does not acquire them. The Gemara answers, The same is true, even if the seller did not say to him, I am selling you a donkey and its vessels. In that case, as well, the saddle, the saddle cloth are sold. And this is what the Brayta teaches us. That even though the seller said to him, I'm selling you a donkey and its vessels, the buyer still does not acquire the sack and the saddle back in the kumni. My vechumni, Amr of Papa, Barshmo, Mar Kavta, Dinashi. The Gemara inquires, what is the meaning of and the kumni? Rav Papa Barshmo says, this is the saddle used by women. A dilemma was raised before the sages. Behold, and I love Machlokas, Aval Bishainan, I love Modilahu, Nakama Madai, Odilma Bishainan, I love Machlokas, Aval Beodin, I love Modele, Rabono, the Nahum, Tashima, who is man, Shamar Lo, who the whole Masha love, Hare, Kulan Makhurin. A dilemma was raised before the sages, does this dispute apply? Only to a case where the vessels are on the, are on the donkey. But when the vessels are not on the donkey, Nachman the Mead concedes to the rabbis that they're not sold. Or perhaps the dispute applies to a case where the vessels are not on the donkey. But when the vessels are on the donkey, the rabbis concede to Nachman the vessels are sold. The more I suggest, come in here, a proof from the aforementioned price up. And when the seller says to the buyer, I am selling it and everything that is on it, the donkey and all of those items, all the items are sold. In this case, the vessels are on the donkey and everything is sold. Granted, if you say that the dispute applies when the vessels are on the donkey, in accordance with whose opinion is this ruling? It is the opinion of the rabbis, and although in general one does not acquire the vessels, if the seller explicitly says that, he is selling the donkey and everything on it. The buyer acquires it all. But if you say that the dispute applies when the vessel are not on the donkey, but when the vessels are on the donkey, everyone agrees that they are sold in accordance with whose opinion is this ruling. Even according to the opinion of the rabbis, there is no need to say explicitly that he is selling everything. Ma, she royally has to love. 
The Gemara answers, actually, the dispute implies when the vessels are not on the donkey and the Raita is in accordance with the opinion of the rabbis and the language of the Raita should be amended to say, and when he said to him, I am selling it and everything that is fit to be on it. In other words, those items usually found in a, on a donkey. Everything is sold. With Hashema, the Gemara suggests another proof. Tashma coming here a solution from the Mishnah. Rehud Omer Pamim Mechurin, Pamim Eshin and Mechurin. My love, Amai the Kamar Tanakama Koi Rehuda, Lord of Yehuda. Milsa, I pray that Kamar. Okay, uh, the Gemara suggests another proof. Coming here a solution from the Mishnah. Rehuda says, There are times when the vessels are sold, and there are times when they are not sold. What is it not the case of Rabbi Huda, referring to that which is in the first Tana said. If so, the dispute between the rabbis and Nachman the Mead must be referring to a case where their vessels are on the donkey. Rabbi Huda addresses the same uh, set of circumstances. The Gemara rejects his proof. No, Rabbi Huda was speaking of a different matter. Milsachwiti um, Gemara, top of the 78b, um, different matter, and was not necessarily addressing the same case discussed in the beginning of the Mishnah.